I'm going to forge f bollocks and shit. I can't think of words and I haven't even started yet. I'm going to forge my own carbon fibre handlebar brake lever. That was the one. Uh, this is one that I printed just to make sure that it works. Uh, it didn't turn out quite well. It lifted quite a lot. <laughs> but it's the right length. It's the right length for... Uh, you've got the switch gear that sits here, I think it is, and that makes it so as I can actually grip it properly. Now out of that, I've now made a casting. This is me casting. Uh, I'll take it apart now. So, out of this, we've got... Uh, this obviously is the bottom piece and this is going to be the top piece and that goes together like that so there, there is in essence your mould. I could have printed this in one piece but I'm a bit concerned that I'm not going to be able to separate it so I need as many separation points as I can. So this can be split in half, this can be split in half. Now that's going to go onto there, then I'll fill the mould full of whatever. Uh, this piece here is for the pivot so I thought it would be an ideal place to put a bolt so that's got to go in first and it's got to stay in there uh, then I'll fill it full of whatever and then I'll put this in like that and then I can put my bolts and everything else through it and the middle piece I've decided I'm going to clamp it in the vise that's the theory behind it whether the practice of it will actually work I I haven't got a clue. Now, looking at videos, I've noticed that the manufacturers of the stuff that I use have actually done a video on this and I didn't even know about it. So, what I've got to do is, I've got to take all these apart uh, and I've got to put filleting wax on the threads to ease uh, disassembly. Is that the word? Probably not, I don't give a shit. So I've got to put filleting wax on these so as it doesn't actually stick in the mould. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to get it all prepped and then I can come back and show you the complete f*** up that I'm going to do. <laughs> I've got to give the mould, uh, what, three or four coats of this? I don't know. I'm going to give it four coats. There's a lot of places on here that I couldn't, I can't sand it, so there's going to be 3D print marks on it. There's nothing I can do about it. I've sanded in the places that I possibly could, but it's anyway. It's going to need sanding down afterwards, I reckon. I'm going to cut a channel in there because I'm concerned about air getting trapped in there. If I cut a channel, then the resin will be able to come out. I'll do that. I've cut a channel in it. The other reason why I've had to put these pieces on here is purely because of that ball. Uh, I was concerned that if I was to make... I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember. I am going to get flashing a lot of flashing points where I'm going to have to clean it up, but I'm, I'm really not bothered. I, I prefer the part to be too big than too small. If you're thinking of spraying this wax inside, think again. I made a fatal mistake, and I have done, and it's quite, uh, it's not pungent, but <laughs> it smells. So the last thing I want is for any resin to get into those threads. I don't think it's going to be much of a problem, you know, but you really don't want it to happen. Okay, that one's lined up, and that goes that way like that. Now I've got to remember that has to go in now. Okie dokie, right I'm ready to put... it doesn't look right already. <laughs> It doesn't look right. It doesn't matter. It's it's done now anyway. So I can now mix the resin, which is what 30%. Now I haven't got a clue 
Because I can't calculate the volume of that, I haven't got a clue how much I actually need, so I'm just going to mix. It's not going to weigh any more than about 50 grams in total, so I reckon 30 grams. So that's 30 grams of this and 9 grams of hardener. Is it? This is probably going to be way too much. But hey ho, I don't know what I'm doing, but as per usual. You learn by your mistakes. If you don't make mistakes, how the bloody hell are you supposed to learn? Right, the first thing you have to do is put in a layer of epoxy. Of course, because that's how it works. It gives it something to bond to. And I really don't like this bolt being here already. I think that was a bad idea to be honest. But it's part of it now, so it's got to be. It's got to be there. I just hope it doesn't stick, because if it does, I'm gonna have a problem. I should have done that after, shouldn't I? What a dickhead. Right. This is the carbon fibre stuff that I'm using. Now, like I've said, I ain't got a clue how much. <laughs> I don't know how to weigh things out. I don't know about displacement and stuff like that and trying to figure that out. I haven't got a clue. I have not got a clue. So I've still got to wet this through, so I've got to put carbon fibre, I've got to put, sorry, I've got to put resin in there afterwards. This isn't going to work very well, is it? I should have left that out. I, I was thinking about it and I thought, yeah, I'll just, I'll do that. And I did think it was a bad idea, and it is a bad idea. It should be one solid piece and then you drill the holes afterwards. But me being the dickhead, you know, I know best. Yes, this is a very, very messy process. Very fiddly, very messy. Of course, any, any excess resin, in theory, should come out of the sides. Okay, I'm about halfway through, so in addition I'm going to put some carbon fibre strands in there, actually in the direction of force, so literally, if I fold one of them in half, now this is supposedly to increase the strength I mean, theoretically, you know, it, it should, it should work. Because these chopped strands, they obviously are only, they're not directional, they give, they give um, strength in every way. But these should give directional strength. Okie dokie. <laughs> I haven't got a clue if that is enough or too much. Now for those thinking why don't I put some in there, uh, it's going to be bloody pointless. <sighs> Purely because that's going to be squeezing down and it's going to force itself into there anyway. I, I don't know. Obviously I've never done this before so I don't know if that is the best way of doing it. I do apologise but... It's tough now, isn't it? 
so I'm going to put the rest of the bolts in right I'm not going to be able to show you this bit purely because I've got to put that vice there on the end of the table I've got to change my gloves first and clean all this off and then what I've got to do is very very slowly I've got to wind it up uh, and hopefully it will actually close that gap <laughs> I doubt it <laughs> I might not have put enough in actually. <laughs> hey, stop! The time has come. I've taken all the bolts out, obviously, as you can see, and there's no way I'm going to be able to separate that by hand. <laughs> uh... Ow, you mother fucking it! I'll get me tool. Let's just try tapping it there. And then we'll try tapping it there. And then we'll try tapping it there. <laughs> it's coming. Oh my god, there's a mould. There's actually a mould. There's something there. <laughs> I'm shocked. <laughs> It's actually worked. Wow. worked. Well that needs loads and loads of cleaning up. But I've got both of the ball ends. It's actually come out pretty bloody perfect. And it weighs absolutely nothing. <laughs> right, I'm going to start the clean up process. I'm going to have to get a Dremel or sandpaper or something on it. Good idea, Tony. Well, it now looks like a brake lever. Look at that. <laughs> and that, that does not bend, uh, that won't bend at all. This is the lever that goes on the Tectro Dorado which has come out far better than I expected. <laughs> it's, it's superb, it's absolutely superb. So what I'm going to do is I've got to put, I've got to put a coat of um, the XCR uh, coating resin on it. You know, I've noticed something when people are building things on YouTube the ones who don't speak get the most views so should I just shut the f*** up? <laughs> it's an absolute work of art not only is it work of art but it actually works. This does need it does need bleeding quite badly, but that doesn't it doesn't go to the bars. That's as hard as I can possibly pull it. 
and there is absolutely zero flex on it. If you want to do something like that, it's worth the time and the effort doing it, but it's a lot of time and a lot of effort. I really it took me, because of my condition, it took me about three days to do it. But it's the best three days I've spent. I'm just so amazed and that ball end is MSVA compliant so if I do decide to go and do the MSVA oh it's beautiful absolutely beautiful <laughs>